Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, with here with my co-host, Chad Lutsky. We are collaborating on a new project, uh, tentatively called Planet Caravan, and we want you guys to be a part of it. So come on in, sit down, relax, and watch us uh, outline this joker. Yesterday, we did brainstorming what we wanted to write about, and today we are going to be outlining, uh, throwing things around, uh, Chad has a really unique idea that I finally wrapped my head around. He brought it up during yesterday's stream, but I still wasn't <laughs> digging the vibe. Like I wasn't like, I, I couldn't parse what he was getting at. And now I do, which is literally we outline this thing so that we know where we're going. And then I will write like chapter one and he'll write chapter two as I'm writing chapter one or vice versa. He'll write chapter one, I'll write chapter two. And then, you know, we, we go on from there and that's how we'll write. So you guys will literally be able to watch the book written in real time at the same time, most of the time. So I'm not sure, I'm sure there will be times when I won't be able to write, the chat will be able to write, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Boggle Queen. Um, anything you wanna say before we get started, Chad? Um, I, I, in regard to, um... <clears throat> Writing at the same time, I did think last night that I think at the at, at least the very first chapter, perhaps, um, should be written uh, first so that we understand the voice exactly. of our protagonist. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of cutting and pasting, and um, you know, like that doesn't work. These, you know, we need to uh, probably establish since it's first person, yeah, the voice of our character before. Once we get to know him a little bit, then it'll be like, okay, cool. Got this now. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm completely fine with that. I was going to uh, bring up the same thing. Like we either need to do like a test run and together and get the voice mm -hmm. right first because we're doing first person. I also have a, 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 an idea. We'll get to this in a minute, but an idea for how we will get the POV from the other side of the fence, the uh, people who are chasing him. Um, and... I think it'll work in first person without breaking the walls. Um, you you might dig it, you might not. But uh, yes, I completely 100% agree. We need to focus on that first and get this character, get to know this character before we both go running off in opposite directions. Because I started writing stuff yesterday, just, just playing with voices. And I sent it to Chad. Chad's like, that's a little bit too much for me to tell me today. That's a little bit too much. Uh, let, let me, in fact, let me, let me read it to you guys. Since I did it off camera, I'm just going to read it to you guys. Do it. Um, Perfect. <clears throat> let's see here. Just, just so you know everything we've been doing off, off there. Uh, oh, Lord. Did I not? I'm going to have to put, I don't even think I have it saved anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I didn't actually write it down. I wrote it in uh, in the actual message to, to you because it was just stuck in my head. All right, so here we go. The sack of shit across from me doesn't know he's about to get took. Big old bitch, but not tall. 5'7", 300 if he's an ounce. Breath like a shit-packed garbage disposal. Pit stains the size of Texas. Wall-eyed, too, as if Mother Nature hated this one motherfucker most of all. And that is a, that is abrasive. Abrasive as hell to open. But that's like the first voice that came to me when I started thinking about this. And I even mentioned, Chad, I was like, if you don't like it, I'm completely fine with that because I know how abrasive that sounds. And Chad's like, yeah, yeah let's, let's pull it back a little bit. And we discussed uh, what were what certain terms we're comfortable using and what we're not comfortable using, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. I'm ready to jump into this outlining stuff. Um, uh, okay. Chat, we're pretty much going to keep eyes. Oh, I'm I'm at least going to keep eyes off chat so I can focus. Um, so, but we'll open it up. If anybody has questions, we'll open it up toward the end. We'll probably go for another hour today, um, if not a little longer or a little less. Depends on how much stuff we get done. Um, I don't imagine we're going to be doing any writing today. Um, it's all going to be outlining and getting getting this stuff. Yeah. Um, also, I have no problem with you starting. So if you want to start, I would rather, and this might sound a little lazy, it probably is, but I would rather probably you start since I can be so abrasive, since I could, since I just run off on my own, it's probably better if you start and then I can mimic what you're doing okay. instead of, instead of, you know, trying to come together on a single voice. Uh, I will just try to mimic what, what you're doing. Um, but for the, for the most part, I can do, I can do your style. 
Um, and I'm very happy doing your style. You know, it's, it's not much different from south of here, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> and other stuff I've written. But, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, so, my idea right off the bat, uh, my idea for showing the people chasing him would be to have some kind of setup where uh, he is somehow infiltrated not like stealthily, but he's been brought into whoever he's going to rob their association or whatever. Um, and he has a connection already inside the organization. Um, and, but we wouldn't make it obvious that this person brought him in, but he knows this person and he mm -hmm. ends up getting in anyways. And so while he's on the run, he can get constant updates from I, I don't know how we're going to do this because we're talking 70s or whatever, but he can get some kind of updates from the dude that's with him, maybe a phone call at a, a you know, phone booth or whatever at a certain time every day or something. And he can update them. And then about halfway through the story, when he thinks he's well and good and off and there's, you know, nothing's going on, suddenly his friend stops calling. And that way we, we know that, you know, expect them because I can no longer divert well of course you can't divert him now because he's dead mm -hmm. um and that's when everything goes to pot and that's when they have to get ready for the possibility he has to be honest with the the, the carnival folks or whatever you want to call it um be like yo these people but enough time of course is going to have to pass so that he's in in the fold with these people and they'll be willing to you know maybe he's a hero at some point in time who knows um something something small that was it ingratiates them to him or brings brings him into the fold, so on and so forth. Um, and then, of course, we already know we can get the character build up from the guy on the phone. It's like so-and-so says, if he finds you, he's going to do this to you. And they got these people after you. Don't be here or there. They, they know you're going here, so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, um, that that was my idea. I don't know. Love it. Love it. I, I, think, that, I think that will work uh, really well. Um, I, I have my ideas of people who live in this house. We mm -hmm. could add one. We could choose one that would be um, definitely that would be that. And I, w I was also wondering, this might be a little too goofy for you, but I am I still like the idea of planets caravan like the the possessive. It doesn't have to be that. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, the planets caravan and have like the main like nine characters or, or eight at this point i'm sorry pluto but and have them named like mars and jupiter and uranus and that kind of thing it might be too goofy for you but carnivals and things work like that you know that it, yeah. it's always nicknames it's it yeah it's on brand uh nicknames so that that was an idea i just want to throw out there don't have to use it um but uh i do like the idea of i, I love the idea of the title so I, I think I want to stick with that no matter what we do, but making, I'm also, my literary brain is also like, we got to make Planet Caravan important. Like we got to, there's got to be a reason for that other than the Black Sabbath tune. Um, so well, that's why, yeah, that that's why, well, cause we've got these, uh, essentially these caravans going from town to town. Right. And um, this is the, this whole, this whole, um, this, this kid's whole world now. So that's kind of how I, that, you know, like his whole world now is just a planet of caravans, you know, traveling from, okay. from town to town. And it's and and for nobody, for somebody who doesn't isn't even familiar with the song, which is a deep cut anyway. Yeah. Um, unless you're a big Pantera fan, I guess. And, and you know well, yeah, it that. was it was more popular after Pantera did it um, in that tribute album. It was far more popular in that one or their cover just off by its side it was far it got far more popular after for sure. that but yeah yeah for sure but it's always been one of my back in the day when i used to get stoned at all the time it's the perfect like you know just oh, yeah i i had a tape that had this thing and and i i put it's all that was on it was just it was on loop you know on a cassette mm -hmm. tape i just constantly and so it's always been one of my it's it's a strange outlier of a song for that band um but uh somebody who doesn't even know the um the origins of the title uh i think it sounds cool because it's like what yeah. you know it's, it's like one of those things like what do you mean like planet caravan like i think the words fit well together mm -hmm. and they they sound good so if you're not even familiar with it it's kind of like one of those yeah things it's like 
um, it's not off-putting, but it's like, uh, what does this, what does it mean, Planet Caravan? Yeah, it's intriguing. It, it definitely yeah. catches the uh, catches the attention, catches the ca- yeah, peaks interest is what I was trying to say. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I love the idea of of solving that, you know, of building the tension through the phone calls, where since we're writing in first person, knowing kind of what's going on on the other end. Right. Um, at least the guy hopes he knows what's going on um through his source um i was thinking about ages last night and if he's if he's any older than the age of 16 uh why didn't he just kind of leave a long time ago you know gotcha so i thought i thought if he if he ended up at this at this place at the age of 12 let's say so he's lived most of his life knowing better than than the examples that have been around him with these people um and i figured like a uh maybe it could be an uncle you know just uh kind of like the black sheep uncle and his wife uh complete mess drug dealers started out as small crime and and it could be the cousin that it could be yeah it could be the i I forgot about that i forgot about that you wanted the almost the the harry potter beginning when he ends up with the family, I just remembered that. So it could be like the cousin that, and then we could have the it, the implied drama of the cousin helping, and then you find out that you know they're so serious that they killed their own kid because they because he was helping, or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. I don't know because they would never suspect that it's the it's their own kid helping the other kid get away. Does that work? Yeah, if I if if I know what you what you're saying. So so the family that he's with the the one that he's with is at first. They find out and they put a stop to it because their own kid is is right. narking on them uh, right. with on these phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Instead of um, some out, outsider bringing him in, he's already a part of it. I forgot all about the family thing that you want to do, and I fucking love that idea because we can build that up. Yeah, I mean, th- just that alone that makes my my opening. I forgot all about that. I I should have watched yesterday's before we came in here. That's that's a great idea. Um, I figured I figured a fourth of the book probably would take, at least would take place in this house, establishing all of this stuff that he goes through. Um, well, I'll just lay out my my idea about yeah. the beginning of the book because I've got pretty much everything laid out up into him taking off. Um, I, w- I was picturing a, uh, yeah, like aunt, uncle, just white trash. Um, they also have his other uncle lives there. It's one of those houses where nobody can get up off their ass to get a job. So they all just kind of live together and they do their thing. Um, so you've got the other uncle there with his, uh, girlfriend and there, and she's pregnant. Um, so there's four people right there. And then you know, with the cousin and then, um, uh, maybe one other person, but they're all, it, with the exception of the younger cousin, they're all in this together. Right. You know, as far as, you know, doing their crime. And now they've got, well, one day the uncle, the main uncle comes home. He's got a kilo of cocaine. I figured we could use cocaine. We're talking late 80s, early 90s. Mm-hmm. I don't know where this is taking place, but even though heroin's been around for decades and decades, and so has meth, it wasn't widely widely available as much as like cocaine was. Yeah, uh, heroin was almost exclusively small black communities uh, when it first started gaining a foothold yeah, like the, in like the, the jazz the musicians. 70s, but it was yeah, yeah, jazz musicians in the thirties and all that. Yes, all that, all that stuff. The yeah people yeah. and then and then rock stars in the UK, you know, in the seventies and stuff like that. It was kind of like a um, yeah, it was a different drug. It took a long time to to. Uh, really be widespread like it is now so i thought maybe cocaine yeah um he well, comes from, go ahead let, let me let me throw this out real quick so you have what if the uncle i mean we're almost in three smile mile territory here but what if the uncle stole that to begin with or he stole money to be able to buy that to flip that's it? what I'm, yeah that's what i was getting yeah. at okay okay All come, right. so we're on the comes, same page Gotcha. Yep, he comes home with his kilo. Doesn't say where he got, he got it from, but it's clear it's it's stolen. Yeah. Um, 
excites everybody. This is a game changer. Mm -hmm. I did some I did some uh, pricing. I think the street value of this kilo would be around three hundred thousand. Uh, um, I'll have to look more than just one chart, but that's what I'm. That's the number I'm coming up with. I, I also have old druggy friends, so I can that, that are like in their 80s now, so I can ask them what this shit cost back then. But also, okay. I think you're about right with 300k for co for a kilo of cocaine around that time, anywhere between 250 and 400. So it depends on what the grade is, but yeah, that, yeah. I, I would say 300 is good. It also apparently depends on how much is being sold at a time. So if somebody is, yeah. is, if you're selling it out, like, you know, 10 grams or lower, you charge more. And if they're, but if they're, if you're charging like, you know, more than 10 grams at a time, then I guess you charge less, it's kind of like a, a deal or whatever. So, um, but the stuff is stolen. So you've got people after them, mm -hmm. you know, um, which makes this whole trail of because once it gets stolen from them, then you've got like this, uh, like the old Pink Panther cartoon when the dinosaurs chasing after the bone and the dude yeah. behind him. And, you know, except for instead of this being passed back and forth, it's just this this uh, constant that, chase. That could be part of the ending. All right. Let's say at the I, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but at the end they instead of like taking care of you know the the carnies taking care of the the family unit um they could like i don't know somehow incapacitate them or maybe just one of them and that would be the ending dropping him off at the person he stole from like mm -hmm. i i think that would be a cool final ending like the 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 original guy you know, waking up, walking out of side of his house, maybe dudes in the a van down the street just watching. And they have they've sat the uncle in the middle of this guy's yard, duct taped and said, you know, and here, the coke is in his lap and you know, whatever's left of it is like, here you go. Here's your thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think that's a funny image. And like I said, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. But to to ha to bring it full circle and bring the person that the uncle stole from to begin with back into the fold somehow i think would be really cool thematically mm -hmm. okay yeah um so you've gotten kind of like this cat and mouse thing but i'm a little i'm a little ahead of myself i, I want to still talk okay. about the, the house um yeah so the household consists of the husband and wife which are the aunt and uncle as well as the husband's brother the other uncle uh Oh, and I was also thinking of, so you've got this other nasty uncle. He's just single. He's just a, a, a follower by himself. Right. So that's three. And that's the one that, with the pregnant wife. No. Then he okay. has a son who is 24 years old and has a trashy pregnant wife. Oh, okay. So we're talking about a huge unit of people. Do we want to do a house or do we want to do a double wide and really make it like roach infested, cramped, and just utterly fucking miserable? Um, I think either way, it probably wouldn't matter. We can make the house trashy anyway you know squeaky or a uh, uh, squeaky um porch door all that you know uh, yeah, yeah weak floorboards all that kind of stuff uh just nasty um and then uh yeah so trash trashy pregnant wife and then the younger cousin mm -hmm. um like young like maybe nine or something like Ooh, that you know yeah that would that would be devastating yeah um so none of these people really care for the protagonist he's nothing but a hindrance um for their lifestyle and a constant reminder that they've made bad choices and and uh because he's not he's just not down with that like i said they've, he's he's been living there for four years but um when he starts hearing about this guy coming up hey i got this thing it's going to change our lives we can get out of this dump we can you know all we got to do is sell this and, and whatever else um so the then the, this this kid who's 16 goes to 15 or 16 goes to this carnival that's in town doesn't have any money so he's not gonna be riding rides and, and playing the games and stuff because he just doesn't have the cash we can even goes, make him let him sneak in like yeah he doesn't even have the fare i don't know that you have to sneak in you just can't do crap right is that how it works well, the one the ones around here um i'm not saying all of them are like this because i've been to the ones where you can just walk in and then you pay for everything else 
but the ones around here especially like the ones that you were talking about uh that smell like pigs and tractors yeah um those you you have like a five dollar admission fee so no matter what they're making money off of you um and some of the bigger ones i have been to two but that was when i was out west and they were like local attractions that didn't move um, but all the carnivals, all the traveling ones that I've been to, and I, this is just my experience, um, mm -hmm. you pay at least something to get in or you bring okay. like a bag of canned goods. Um, so he could 100 percent do that, too. I don't know if they did that back in the 70s. I'm pretty sure they might have. But um, and then, you know, that they literally the carnies literally use the canned goods. This isn't a, like a charity to collect for right. you know, local people. They literally eat off that stuff. Um, so it's, you know, either the however much back then it'd probably be like a buck um to get into something like that because nowadays it's like five dollars especially mm -hmm. the one that comes here every october august sorry every august um <clears throat> but yeah uh or, or we can e either way he could like I, well i like if you have to pay i like that idea much better because it it it, it goes better with um my next part um i was gonna have this kid go behind a barn or whatever one of the big barns they have to take a piss but it, it works better if he's sneaking, he's sneaking in and he's maybe done this before or whatever. He's sneaking in while he's sneaking in. He sees this girl taking a piss uh, behind this barn that I was going to have him be behind too. But sneaking in, sees her just copping a squat, you know, taking a piss right there behind this thing. She's working there. She's uh, She's same age, 16 years old. She's been with this carnival since she was like 13, dated one of the guys there that was like 35 or something when she was really young, cut it off. Um, but the she used the to... Ferris wheel operator. The Ferris wheel operator is always <laughs> <laughs> so 100% Ferris wheel operator. She used to work one of the games, um, then upgraded to operating the carousel, which is broke down this particular night. So she's kind of got the night off and she's just doing whatever. Um, they strike up a conversation or whatever, realizes he's sneaking in, you know. Uh, she's very um, kind of uh, streetwise <clears throat> and assertive, but well-read um, and uh, smart for her age because she's seen a lot, you know, joining this place at 13, having a, a, a boyfriend old enough to be her dad yeah. at one point. Oh, yeah. Um, then she just kind of, they almost kind of have like this date where, she they end up going on rides and stuff because she right. has this pull um she That's steals cool some, she steals some tickets for him just so they can she knows she's not going to be able to get away with playing all these games to win prizes right and she thinks it's highly romantic to to have a boy win her you know a big <laughs> prize or whatever yeah. so she's kind of forcing this kid into some kind of strange date and this is the she is the catalyst for I like this. This mm -hmm. is different. I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that thing. And I'm going to do what she did. I'm going to join this and I'm going to bring that, those drugs with me. Right. That's like about it. as far as I've got. That, that's uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down with all that. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm, I don't, I'm thinking, I don't have any issue with that whatsoever because <laughs> I'm going to have fun if I get to write some of that section, because I've, I've done that several times in different other, in, in different stories with different themes and things like that. I'm a, to some extent, I, I kind of did it in betting um, during that, you know, whole, when they, the kid, it's kind of like the opposite, but you know, him being alone and without somebody, he realizes how much of his childhood he lost. And mm -hmm. then, but in this one, it would be more like how much of his childhood he could still claim. Like mm -hmm. he could, you know, he'd be traveling, have, having fun, be able to go on rides whenever he wants to, you know, run concession stands, all that, what, whatever, whatever he gets to do. Um, it would be the exact opposite of that thing. You had this kid who never had a childhood wanting to, you know, reclaim some of the fun. So the carnival would really be a, a beacon of hope for him. And, you know, he's, he's stuck in this stagnant place and I'm, I'm getting way too literary and deep with this, but he's stuck in this stagnant place. Um, this, uh, violent, abusive, uh, detestable situation, how, what, whatever we want to do with it. And then he ends up at this carnival. He, you know, meets the girl awkward situation. Uh, maybe she's not awkward at all, but he's hella awkward. And she's like, wow, you, you've never seen anybody piss anyway. I'm just running things through my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, like she's not, she like when she's busted, 
She don't even stop. She doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. She's like, she's can I help she you? Is. She's sitting there with it, holding on to her, she put, pulling, you know, pulling her, her panties and the skirt out so she doesn't pee on them. And she's like, can I help you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Not yeah. shy. Yeah, and exactly. she bring And she brings that, you know, being, I, I love girls like that who are assertive. Doesn't have to be sexually assertive. Just like the guy is learning from this mm -hmm. girl. You know, I, I like that. Whether it's just be strictly platonic, I don't, I don't really care. I just like those kinds of relationships. And I, and I, I do, you know, I did it with three smile because I, I also like age difference relationships. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that might be whether it's just like not freaky, like three smile or whether it's freaky, like betting of boys. Yeah. Um, I just like that strange dynamic, maybe because it's different and everything else feels can feel cliche. Maybe. Yeah. I, I I agree with that. Um, I also prefer assertive, uh, ass assertive female characters. So I'm completely on board with that. Um, the uh, yeah, I really love the idea. We can play with that so much. Uh, going from the first quarter of the book, you, like you said, just you know, building up the family unit, uh, d defining those characters, developing those characters then moving on to almost like a complete reset and reboot where we are now building up the relationship and the characters showing the the difference between where he came from and where he is how everybody in the carnival is so accepting and welcoming and you know everybody helps each other it's it's an actual family unit um and it, it, coming from a blood family unit that couldn't have given a, a, a shit about him um and then the 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 quote unquote date night as they go around and she's introducing him to people. And, you know, he, she, like you said, they're winning prizes. He's stealing tickets, whatever it might be. That whole, that's, that's fucking magic. That's, that's the kind of thing I'm here for. Um, mm -hmm. And also it reminds me very much of, and I'm not saying, you know, it's, I'm not comparing it, but that's also how Twilight Eyes by Dean Koontz goes is mm -hmm. Slim McKenzie is a young dude. He's about 18 years old. Um, he's uh, just, kind of a nomad running around he ends up at this carnival and he meets this this assertive woman but she's a she's a grown-ass woman i think she's in her 30s um and they they end up forming a relationship and one of the most awkward sex scenes in any of dean Koontz books but um that th that's the only bad part of that book uh and it then you know it's him being brought into the fold and becoming a part of this this family unit i anyways needless to say i fucking love it i i'm all i'm all over this uh yeah i'm trying to think so so are we starting let's say we start like your your opening chapter would be him at 12 losing his parents and having to go live with do you want to do something like that or do you want it to open i think we up? should start I, I i like the idea of just starting like dumping him in the middle of this house and, and then okay. slowly kind of revealing you know no kind of info dump but you know just slowly revealing his situation but um unless i mean we could do it would it feels like if we did the age started at the age of 12 it would feel more like a prologue yeah that's that's pretty much what i was saying and some people don't even like prologues so the, what the fuck i don't i don't know um but they just uh, don't like the word prologue i <laughs> I don't understand the, the because the, I because I can't pronounce it. No, I'm just kidding. Prologue. Anyways, I'm just kidding. Like um, they'd be fine if this said chapter one, but if it says prologue, it's like I, I'm not going to read this. I don't want this. Well, most people. The complaint I hear is that it's not actually part of the story. Um, like there, there's no reason for a prologue because you find out what happens in the prologue later on in most books. So there's no point in it. But mm -hmm. uh, prologues are especially important in genre fiction because they mm -hmm. set up the action. You know, you're opening with something with with something to you know sink your teeth into instead of like you know more like a Stephen King where you get to know everybody slowly before yeah. the bad shit even starts happening. Um, but I I I suddenly have this image of opening up the book with this kid sitting on the porch steps of this trailer, chucking rocks into a tin can. Like I don't I don't know why, but I got it's especially in a very uh, cinematic sense. Like, okay. you know, we're just kind of panning out and there's just this kid chucking rocks into this old coffee can. Um, and then that's the, the leaping point. Like, you know, someone popping up and going, quit all that damn racket. Because every he maybe he's obsessed with the sound of the rock hitting the can. It's like, 
ding, ding. And then he can be at the carnival later on and hear that same hear that same sound from like the the fucking hammer machine or whatever it is. The ding, ding, and that brings back you know that it's subtle shit like that that I like to. I like to put into stories, mm-hmm. but it's just a, another thing where he maybe he's a little bit sensitive to certain sounds, and there's certain almost like an ASMR people stimming off of that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and he just likes that sound, and that's just one more thing for him to fall in love with at the carnival. Is they're all maybe maybe that's like a theme. It's all the right sounds. It's you know not the bad sounds like people screaming and you know angry breathing and things like that that get under his skin. But it's all the the bright, the everything is bright and happy and all the sounds are cheerful. But in his mind, since he's so young, he would just think something like, those are the right sounds, not the bad sounds. And I, don't, I like that a lot. <laughs> if, we, if, yeah. we don't, if we don't use that fucking man, I'm using it. But uh, anyway, I, I really I really like that idea. But it's a, that's the very first thing that came to me uh, just now as you were talking was that vision of him. Yeah, chucking, like it. Yeah, chucking stones. Ding, ding. Could, and then he could also be in love with the the camaraderie, obviously at the, at the carnival. But I think oh, yeah. it's important to have a protagonist or an antagonist at, in, within the carnival too. And maybe it could be the Ferris wheel guy, guy that used yeah. to date. Uh-huh. And w- if the people show up and they're like, point us toward the kid or whatever, he's like, he's freaking right over there because yeah. you don't want the kid there because he's because now the kid is now running around with his ex. Right. Yeah whatever yeah Ugh. yeah i like that i like that a lot um having having the ferris wheel op- operator you know it would be better than like the cliched like uh, um fun house you know the guy who runs the fun house or the barker that's loud and annoying um i, I like subverting expectations and i think the uh the, the ferris wheel guy uh would be would be perfect because ferris wheel operators are usually the um, in real life, they're <clears> usually <throat> the, the seediest of uh, because they like you know the the younger the the younger couples getting on. I've 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 seen I've read and seen several videos talking about how that particular job brings in the trash for mm-hmm. for whatever reason because it's not really a ride that goes quickly. You know, it's something where you know you can be hands on putting the the belts on and all that. And of course, there's other rides like that. But with this one, he can you can watch slowly, and you're able to get a good view of whoever's on the ride. Um, and this is the kind of shit that I came across going through all my research for this other project. Um, all the dynamics within the carnival and how there's a, there of course there's a hierarchy. We all know that there's the owner. There's you know the the bottom is the roustabouts, the the tent men or whatever the ones that put everything up. And then you have the uh, concession stands, you have the ride operators, and then if you have performers, they are usually directly below the owner of the circus or carnival or whatever it might be. Um, so that's that tends to be the hierarchy. Um, and putting the, the Ferris wheel guy there in the middle, he wouldn't have any real, uh, what's it called, not obligation, but any real uh, fealty to the to the the big dogs and he also wouldn't care about people like the roustabouts and if we make our you know our main character a roustabout at the beginning then he really wouldn't care what happened to the kid especially since he usually takes care of you know erecting the the ferris wheel by himself or just him and his little lackey sidekick that he has you know like a little yes man that runs around with him i think that would be funny too uh and i I always i always like quirky side characters so you know, my brain's always working with stuff like that. But yeah, so Ferris wheel operator is an antagonist within the carnival. And then, and the whole drama there is that she is spending way too much time with our, our, our the new guy. And then at the same time, you have the family trying to find where he went. Um, and that could be as easy as back then. You didn't really know where circus and carnivals were going to end up. You know, they, they had their own schedule that they followed and the towns knew they were coming, but it wasn't like you could do an internet search back then and find out where this place is going to come up next. Yeah. So the, the cousin could call and be like, they know what town you're going to be in. They don't know where you're going to be in that town or, or whatever. Um, so, and every single one of those phone calls would get a little more and more stressful until the phone calls stop altogether. We already talked about that. Um, yeah. 
I'm I'm really really <laughs> really enjoying this. Um, I can I can see it very clearly, and I think that's the most important part, especially in collaborating, that both people can see the see the everything that's going on very clearly. So yeah, I'm good. Awesome. I don't I I'm I don't I don't have I don't see enough of this to have a full outline yet, but I feel like there's enough here to like I said, I can I can see the first you know 100 pages being taken place at the house. Yeah. You know. We can do that. Easy. And the build up of just so that by the time he leaves um that he would, you know, if this were one of my books that I written a couple of years ago, I would probably start it him bolting out the door. You yeah. know, and then um but I'm trying to I'm trying to back up a little bit with some of my stuff and and make it and yeah, if, if we're going for the presses that we we talked about, yeah. we're 100 percent going to have to have some yeah. kind of build up. They're they're not going to they're not going to be down with just opening, jumping. And on top of that, that also cuts out a lot of the character development that we would. I'm not saying never mind all the reasoning. It is better yeah. to start this way um, than, than it would be to bolt out the door. But I suffice to say that I would 100 percent read the Lutsky book version where it's just him <laughs> running out the door and then filling in people at the carnival. What happened? Um, but yeah, for this one, definitely uh, the first hundred pages of that, and then a hundred pages of just him being involved with the carnival, getting to know people, drama in the carnival from like Ferris wheel man, whatever, um, all of that. And then the last hundred pages, right, right at the beginning of the last hundred pages, it could be um, the there's no phone call. That could be like the last part of part two is uh, it's been several days and I've heard nothing from the cousin um this is this is a problem you know they must be closing in and then the final bit of it is uh, final 50 to 100 pages would be the the people finding the family finding him and showdown whatever whatever what have you um and i am all for i am a big fan of big endings i know that you like to leave things either open or you know everybody you pretty much like like lauren and the fact that most people either die or they're in a bad worse situation at the end of the book than at the beginning at least with my with my fate well that's not right either because Goldface boy has a very positive ending yeah but, there's, only, there's only a couple like maybe wallflower and that, that's three that, smile yeah and then, um yeah most of them uh i mean even but even the happiness is kind of ambiguous yeah yes you know? yeah it's like this seems like it's happy in the cannibal creator uh, uh has a devastating ending too but yeah but um yeah but yeah i, I like him a little bit open-ended um so well, i would say the, what, what i was getting at with is i like big endings big ending, i like yeah. you know and i really i don't know if you're on board with this or not tell me up front i like the idea of the carnival having shut down for the weekend and it being you know pretty much closed up and that's what the family is waiting for so that they can go in and snatch this kid and then you know every but every corner they turn there's another you know almost almost like running through like the entire place is a fun house but not that they've set traps or anything, but they maybe the sideshow people, you know, hide in the dark and jump out at them, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's it's them getting trapped inside this place when they were when they thought they were the they were the ones attacking, finding out that they're trapped in this carnival with with all these people that have our main characters back. I really like that idea um because that would also bring the family theme back around where you know we we take care of our own kind of thing um which that's another theme in my other project but I, that's that's just, it's just a carnival theme to begin with because they do take care of each other and mm -hmm. they don't allow outside sources to take care of anything so they 100 percent wouldn't call the cops and most of them usually either have a long rap sheet or they're on the run from something um okay. or or whatever it might be so 100 percent, these people do not call the cops and when the cops do come in they do not talk you know um so i i like the idea of that style ending where it is um not really horror but more of a thriller aspect where we have a bigger payoff since we're going to be here longer than a normal lutsky book um and then we can 
you know, we could even, as far as like an open ending, like I said, we can have them drop the dude off on the the front lawn of the guy he stole the the drugs from. I think that would that would be interesting. But mainly, what I'm asking your Google for is that ending with going, you know, them getting trapped when they thought that they were the ones that were hunting. They end up becoming the hunted. So now, are we talking about the family, or is the family killed by the people who actually owned the coke in the first place? It could, it could be maybe some of the family gets taken by the guys. Like you need to the whoever had the coke to begin with, maybe some of it. So it's just a small group of people, like the father, the, like the, not the father, the two uncles. Maybe the two uncles go to try and you know reclaim. They finally track him down. They're in just as many dire straits as yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it would be, I kind of like the idea of letting the, the people that he stole from kind of stay on the outside for the entire. I think I do too. I, it sounds a little convoluted if we, if we get, right. have the double chase going on. What if to even build more hatred toward the, the, um, <clears throat> the, the um, white trash family. What if we, have them take one of their own and feed it to the to the people he stole it from and say this is your guy and so they end up killing him and <clears throat> he's like you know we don't know what he did with your coke like like maybe the 24 year old son and his pregnant wife they're oh, the ones that's who took good. it and so that's, i like that. that establishes just how evil this family is and then we don't have to deal with that other like organized whatever group or right. whatever the other now do you want the them to kill the the cousin or do you want them to just like find out and then like punish him well i don't know how we would find that out that would be the issue with the first person narrative how would we find out what happens to the cousin why the phone calls stop well That's yeah well I, ahead of that he could say in the phone calls he could say hey um you know you know fill him in on what's going on but also say like uh um they fed bobby and his wife you know right. whatever uh to there so now they're not chasing but i i don't know exactly how to how to how to you know the phone calls to stop <clears throat> i don't know that this kid could be calling since they're traveling the 16 year old kid could be calling the the, the house the, or the trailer the, or whatever yeah either the <clears throat> or a designated now he's but now he's he's not answering anymore and they have some kind of code that they work with right you know like maybe maybe the kid gets his his carnival girlfriend it says pretend you're an eight-year-old right. boy pretend you're the kid that lives down the street that my cousin always plays with and we, we can, yes but we can also set up that the, this this family unit all the adults are so fucking lazy that they make the kid answer the phone it's like uh, whatever his name, Larry. Yeah. Larry, get the fucking phone. You know that yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, so Larry's always the one who answers the phone anyway. Yeah. Um, the maybe before he leaves, he tells the kid, the 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 cousin, um, before he skips out, or maybe he leaves him a note or whatever, and he's like, um, I I gotta go. I can't do this anymore. Um, so he leaves a note with him. Maybe the kid hides the note and that's how they eventually find it is, you know, maybe they're tearing apart the house looking for something or whatever. And they come across this note and find out that, you know, they've been they've been talking to each other this whole time. Yeah. Um, I think that would be. I, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's do it that way. And then the phone calls can stop and then uh, main character can find out what happened to cousin when the other folks come in is like why why hasn't uh larry called me you know that kind of thing before the final bit of the book it's like why hasn't it's like we got rid of him what do you mean we got rid of any anything like that i don't mm -hmm. know um or he's he's been or he's been punished just some kind of some yeah. kind of vague you know really dark line like that a real flippant we punished him it's like it's like what the fuck does that mean I really like the idea of having a <clears throat> the carnival owner, like the main guy, has his own like trailer, mm -hmm. and it's decked out. He's like he's like Quagmire or or uh, or Larry from Three's Company, a huge like um, just womanizer. But he has a strong moral code, 
like he has never been down with like if anything he he likes older women you okay. know he's never been down with the ferris wheel guy and their relationship right and maybe the only reason why the guy's still working is because he owed his dad a favor or something like that yeah but he has yeah. a strong moral code he looks after um but but his 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 whole thing is decked out with freaking like one of those vans with the with the velvet inside and all the you yeah, know the like tassels the, in the doorway and yeah shit. like yeah. the love machine you know yeah. like, <laughs> i love that yeah okay. my my if he could he his his bed would be heart shaped and would be spinning uh That's all awesome. the time that is so you know, good. He's got oh that the, is so good dude he's got the lotions and the toys and it's his, it's his thing but he does have this he draws a line you know he does have like this strange moral code where you know like yeah, I, I I like the idea that yeah, and it just makes him kind of like oddball, and he's he's always he thinks he's I don't know David Lee Roth, and he's every time they go to a town, he just thinks he's gonna pick out you and me tonight, you know, in my maybe he has uh, a celebrity he almost impersonates, like he doesn't really impersonate them, but like a uh, who is it from Led Zeppelin, lead singer? I was I, Jimmy Robert Page, Plant. Robert Plant, like you know, some kind of that persona, where he, you know, he's like shirtless or or whatever it might be. He's got like only a vest on and then really tight bell bottoms, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm 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 feeling this. I I really like. I love the idea of the spinning heart shaped bed. That is that's that's fucking amazing. That's the kind of shit that sticks out in stories like this. I I love I love that. I like the um, idea of him being not necessarily attractive. It's his confidence that kind yeah. of oozes his Charisma. sex appeal. Yeah. So he, you know, if he were to look more like John Waters or or uh, Gomez from the Adams Family or something, where it's just like, dude, you're kind of greasy, but <laughs> you're kind of hot too, and I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Almost like an Austin Powers thing. Like he's got the mojo. Uh, yeah. And he, but he is not handsome whatsoever. And that's kind of what I was getting at with the, uh, the whole, he wanted to be a uh, plant, you know, uh, but he, the face doesn't quite fit. Like you yeah. have the long curly luscious hair and he wears like the same get up, but yeah, at the same time, he's just this greasy, uh, ugly dude. John Waters, the, the, that image that you put in my head uh, <laughs> is of John Waters face on fucking Robert Plant. And, I'm just, and now I can't, now I can't unsee it. Anyways, it's a little, a little tiny. Yeah, um, L- yeah. The pen, the pencil, the, the pencil yeah. mustache. Oh yeah, that's that's perfect. I like that, and a very sharp nose, not hooked, but just a very sharp, sharp yeah. nose. Uh, <laughs> uh, I even now I have a, now I have this. You know, it, he's like balding on the top, but maybe the the hair over here he won't let go of the, the skull. long hair. Yeah, skull it exactly. Yeah. I love that idea, man. And it'd just be a, a complete mystery to everyone how he keeps bringing women home or, or whatever. But yet, like you said, you know, he's charismatic and he's fun to be yeah. around and, you know, he's, he's boisterous and he just draws people in. He's almost almost like a cult leader. And that's how these uh, these dynamics work in carnivals anyways. They, the main person is like a king, like a Roma king. Also, the, the only word I won't use in this kind of context is the g word for you know the roma the traveling nomads i don't like that word um uh i have a the friend gyp- gypsy is that a yeah, dirty yeah. word it, yeah it's it's a slur um you can you can look it up i didn't find out about it until about six years ago um i had a friend and i brought it up and they're roma um their their whole family line- lineage is roma um so it's but back but back in this time it would be they would say that word of course, but yeah. Um, so no, I don't. Yeah, I had, I don't, I had no idea. That yeah, that. I don't. I don't use it personally, um, and I don't. I don't write it. I don't put it in books. And when I talk about it, I do use Roma instead of that word. So mm. um, that would be the only thing that I kind of stand stand away from. Um, but I don't mind if you use it. I don't. I don't care if it's in a book that my name's on. Don't get me wrong, um, because I also understand that you know that's how people spoke. So if that word does come up, completely fine. Um, anyways, but. Uh, that that's kind of how that that whole culture you know they have they have a king everyone that they they look up to and that person pretty much rules like I was talking about earlier with the hierarchy um, there's the different levels of respect in the carnival and it's usually 
right underneath the king is any performer like but that's more that's more circus ish than it is carnival because we're talking big top kind of thing where the ringmaster yeah. or whatever um is the king of the thing in this one it would be more uh the the attractions would be higher than you know the concession stands and then you have the roustabouts and then you just have the general cleanup crew which is usually if it's a really small operation the roustabouts and the cleanup crew are the same people so the same people who are building everything and the same people cleaning up and tearing down um and then uh and also we need to talk about you know how big are we talking are we talking about three or four rides um you know how what kind of uh are we going to have, I guess the attractions would be the thing is that we're talking like the normal stuff, like the, uh, of course, you got to have something that spins the whirly gig or whatever. Um, you got to have a fun house. You got to have a Ferris wheel. You got to have the the game booths, the concession stands. What am I missing? Uh, we could even have a petting zoo. A lot of these have them. Uh, the animals are never treated well. So that's one thing that we would have to keep in mind. Um, if we're going to be realistic, they're not treated well, but we could also subvert expectations by having them treated better than even some of the people that work there. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Probably Trans something medium, like not like maybe this, just John Waters dude. Maybe he, <laughs> maybe he, um, he built this from the ground up. You know, like this is his, it's part of why people respect him and the fact that he has a, you know, he has a heart for uh, runaways and just people who are down and out and down on their luck. And he believes in second chances um, rather than like a cult personality where it's like, you know, follow me, you know, yeah. it's easy I, I to like, follow like him that. because he's worth following. And and just because he's a good, a good guy who wants to get laid all the time. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I, lo I love that character sheet, man. Just this is a really good dude who's all about helping people, but he's also about getting some some punani. It's like yeah. that's he's got to end every night. But uh, you know, but then we, I mean, what what kind of mood is he in on the rare night when he can't? You know, that's another yes. like another topic I'd like to watch out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like there's something that he does when he can't find anybody to to go to go back to his his trailer with that's something that he does maybe not drinking but something like he'll, he'll walk around you know swinging his cane or uh, like aggressive i don't i don't know you so, mean so, uh, you so, mean uh, other than masturbate all night yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because we would we wouldn't be able to show that right or we could we could be like oh he's you know uh, oh he, he's gonna he's gonna give himself a beating later on like that could be a, like someone seeing him stomping through late at night alone he's like oh i guess he's going <laughs> i guess he's going to beat himself yeah, the tra the trailer rocks regardless of whether he's in there by himself or not. <laughs> oh, 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 that's good. I love that. Yeah, that's uh, hey Lee, hey, hey J Rod. Yeah, Barkers. We definitely got to have at least one Barker, and they're usually out front of the uh, sideshow or the uh, um, the fun house. Uh, man, I got to get to writing. Well, that's that. Get now is the best time. I mean, you can you can be here and listen to us, but if you got writing to do, man, go write. Um. We'll probably get started. Well, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, we want to jump into this as soon as possible. I don't know if you want to do tomorrow morning. Um, I am 100% free all week. Uh, the only thing I have to do after we get done here is uh, shoot videos. But other than that, I'm completely free. We got a lot done. I'm pretty sure um, we can jump right into this uh, as soon as you want to. I think it'd be interesting if we go live tomorrow or whenever you're free next. We go live. You start writing, and I will just literally just sit here and read what you come up with and kind of bounce back and forth. I don't know if you get distracted when people I'm talk. a very, very slow writer. So a lot of my Ooh, writing me. is just me looking, you yeah, know. looking around. It just yeah, and, and, uh, because I, you know, I don't know if it's it's because I, I type faster than I can think or... Uh, I don't know what it is. My I, I I do get easily distracted, and dialogue is one thing I can rip right through because it's my favorite thing to write. Same here. Yeah. Um, and that's where I don't. That's really where I don't know where these things are headed, and I just love. Or like uh, when a character is first introduced, that I didn't know they were going to be a part of this. Yeah. Then then I can take off. But um, 
Yeah, it can take me uh, a while to to write something. And like I said, I can sit there and stare for a full minute and then write a sentence or, or four. It, um, it's it's funny because I write the exact opposite way. I see through my words. So what I end up doing is I will just word vomit on the page and like a seven line opening will end up be getting trimmed down to like two or three, if even that, um, because I, I always go back and find ways that I can say everything that I said in the least amount of words, especially like something like South of here. Uh, now with shit, like everything is horrible. Now you shit like that, man, you just, it, most of that didn't get rewritten. That was just, you know, that was more of a, a long, long, long form, uh, kind of thing you know mm -hmm. this uh the short and punchy doesn't work for something like that i haven't found a short and punchy doesn't work very well in horror period it works better in crime and uh literary fiction and you know stuff like chuck polinick and you know uh damn near every popular crime writer uh or horror writer uh when once you start i you hear this complaint a lot with uh horror novels like they it's too wordy or with stephen king you hear it constantly he overwrites because it's more about the the themes and the characters and the situation than it is about the horror. So he's building all this stuff up. So yeah, you know, you, you, you understand what I'm getting at, but anyways, um, was, I can't, I for some reason, I can't vomit the words out. Like I wish that I could, and I don't know why. And, you know, I do the, like the, the Lansdale thing where it's like my first draft is really clean. Um, nah. it's not as clean as, as it's going to be, but it's, pretty darn clean and so at the end of whatever writing session i'm pretty happy with the word order the placement right. um maybe that's what slows me down because i yeah Probably, i tend to yeah. make sure that i'm really happy with the i mean it's not perfect things will be a re will be a rearranged yeah but um i wish i didn't do it like that because there's something yeah. about just finishing the book that is so encouraging um going through Excellent. further drafts is so much easier that, that's, that's how I feel, um, too. And that's why I like that's why I don't mind word vomiting, even though it's like double work uh, for me. I I like doing it because that's how I see, you know, that's I all the options where you will stop and be like, stay, you know, staring off for a minute, seeing what's happening, all the different possibilities that you could do next. I literally just write down all the possibilities um, and I do that so I don't lose my momentum, um, because as soon as I start editing my own stuff, the story is done. Like I, I completely lose any interest in the story whatsoever. So yeah. I have to get the story out first. Um, and if that drives you nuts, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but, uh, um, I will at least, I will, I will, I'll try to do a little more of that shoot because also South of here was written, um, longhand. So I really had to choose my words cause I couldn't just like highlight a bunch of stuff and then delete it. So yeah. I can work either way. I just work. You just write, just write how you feel comfortable yeah. writing. You know, oh, I, I, I am. Um, but I'm just just letting you know that if you see like a whole paragraph of stuff that like makes no sense in the sequence, I'm literally writing out everything that I see and I will go back and pick one or we can even talk about which one you like best. Um, because me and Darren did that. Me and TC did that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I definitely. Just just keep in mind that. I, I have, I am not concrete on anything that comes out of this brain. Um, everything can go other places. It can be cannibalized and used for something else. It does not have to be here. Uh, any of my ideas or any of my writing, I am not, I do not have ego when it comes to that stuff. Um, I'm perfectly all right with you rewriting my stuff. I don't care. Um, as long as the end product is to both of our likings, mm -hmm. that's, that's it. And I know you're on the same page. So yeah. just, just expect it. You, in case you look over at my page, it goes, what the fuck is he on about? The dude was just coming out of the door and now he's walking back in the door. What the fuck is he doing? That's the kind of shit that I do. Also, if I don't have a name for someone right off the bat, my keyword is panda fucker. So if you see panda fucker pop up, it's just because it's easy to search in, in search and find. When I finally re, you know, figure out a name I want to call someone, then I'll just go back, search panda fucker, you know, control F and... I will fill in the blanks for all the panda buggers. So just uh, like, I do that know. with I do that with parentheses, parentheses, but I'm a little bit more uh, not so vague in what, like you know. And the lake looked like parentheses something cool here. Yeah, parentheses. You know, so I, it's like 
my mind isn't in that space right now or, or names, you know, like, mm -hmm. or if I can't remember, you know, she was born in, what the frick year was she born? Parentheses, question mark, you know, what year? Parentheses. And then I'll just search for all the question marks or all the, or, or parentheses. And then uh, I fill in the blanks later. Can I ask you a question? I don't know if you've ever done this. I've seen this a lot. Uh, James Newman did it in, I believe, Animosity. And I've seen a lot of authors do it. Do you have any idea why sometimes they won't give the date? They'll give like 19 and then an M dash or 18 M dash or 220 M dash. Like they don't give an actual date. You have any idea why people do? Have you have you even ever seen that? Because I can't get any answers. I've talked to multiple editors, multiple authors, and they're like, I have no idea why, and I don't know James Newman well enough to be like, "Yo, dog, why you do this?" Um, <clears throat> right off the bat, it just makes me think that they're trying to uh, um, lengthen the the uh, the relevancy of the story. Maybe oh. like like when you watch a movie and it says present day and it's like, well, this movie was made for 40 years, 40 years right. ago. So I got you. you. Know. OK, so they don't yeah. have to pinpoint it. That's that, my that, guess. That makes more sense than anything I could think of. I was thinking maybe that they were trying to impose uh, a feeling of not really confusion, but a feeling that, you know, the place and time isn't important. But if that's the case, then why even mention, you know, the 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 year, the the prefix, you know, why mention it's 1900s kind of deal. I, did, I find it, I just find it odd. And for some reason that popped up when you were talking about parentheses, uh, things like that. And I, for the longest time, the reason why I brought that up is for the longest time, I thought that it was because that was just a leftover that they didn't decide on a date. So they just left it over. But then I started reading it in other books and I was like, no, people do this shit all the time. I read the short. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's. I, I'm also wondering if that's how it initially happened, and then other people just started <laughs> picking it up. Like it was I don't know why I'm doing this. It's yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, <sighs> anyways, all right, we're an hour in. I think we got everything we need to get started. Uh, when do you want to do this? Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go? Mm, I don't think so. I'm ready to dive into this son of a bitch. I, I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably spend like the first 15, 30 minutes just like watching you and reading what you what you put down and formulating, you know, the watching you formulate the voice right off the bat. Because with first person, that's insanely easy because they're talking as soon as, you know, you get in there. Um, so I'll watch you do that and we will and then I'll try and see if naturally, you know, I'm. I know if I can already vibe with it, I might go ahead and start writing chapter two. If you have any idea where chapter one is going to end, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm fucking excited. Like I, like yeah. I said yesterday, you know, I was just I the just the idea, the the starting point, the on the run, the the obvious road trip aspect because they're going to be moving from town to town. Also. I kind of like the idea of this going from like either Florida to California or, or somewhere Southern to Western mm -hmm. um, and only doing the lower United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I have a lot of travel time and history going back and forth to California. So mm -hmm. I know where all the cool small towns are, all that shit. So if we stay in that realm um, and I've gotten to know people in these smaller areas, like, you know, Las Cruces, uh, there's a Fort, I believe it's Fort Hood. Um, in Texas, there's a bunch of different places that I've spent a considerable amount of time, um, several days camping or whatever, uh, all the way across. So if you want to do something like that, I know you're more northern. No, you're California. Where are you now? I always get this confused. You were you're on the East Coast. Southwest right? Michigan, but I, <clears throat> the only books that I write that actually take place here are the Jex books. Gotcha. Um, but you lived in California for a time, right? No. Why the fuck do I? I always do this with you. I know we've had. This I know. I know you have. You do. I've never even stepped why. foot there. I've I don't. I have no there. idea why. It's like every time I even think about you, it's like this dude's from California. I'm like, no, he's not. I don't know why. But anyways, so yeah, I have hella experience across the bottom. Um, I lived lived in California for a total of 15 years. Um, I've also lived in Alabama, Georgia, Virginia, Maine. Um, but pretty much, it's only been the East Coast and down here mm -hmm. so but i can get this part right i never really got into the cultures up north so um more more about down here is, is what i like to do um so if you're down with that i yeah. think it's 
cool to have the the circuit run from like Long Beach to to fucking uh, maybe not Pensacola. I kind of want to make this more small townish because yeah. the bigger bigger cities would sure. have their own their own shit. You know. Yeah, and it would make sense. Let's say um, they only have so much for their uh, for their. Yeah, like what they have is isn't really meant for big cities anyway. Like right. it's exactly. like they've got medium sized kind of, and some of it's kind of jank anyway. Yeah, if they if they got more than like five hundred people in a night, they'd run out of fucking food. That kind of shit. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I that that's a, I I love that idea, and that also gives us more time with like uh, the cities that are a bust because what people don't realize is they don't always make money. Um, when they'll stop in a place, sometimes just putting the show up but it is a complete bust because they don't even make them the money back that it took to get there. Um, which mm -hmm. is why a lot of them pre-sell tickets nowadays, but they couldn't do that back then. So, uh, definitely we, we could have some downtime, um, where they end up in, in a location where nothing is going on. Um, and it was just, it's like I said, it's a bust. Uh, there's also something to consider, uh, that you could, to something to think about every single carnival circus any of those things have their own punishment scales like uh if you do something wrong that breaks the code whatever code is set up by the the hierarchy um there is some kind of punishment that comes along with that uh some of them do five minutes alone where the person that you wronged literally gets five minutes alone with you um there's uh and if you watch carnival um it's what the the box the the, the chest do you remember that they, anyways, they stuff you in a yeah. chest and then they ride around with you in the chest. And if you survive, you survive. If you don't, you don't. Dang. Um, no, I don't remember that. So, yeah. Um, so there, there's always some kind of so we could even throw something like that in there for a little more. Uh, I don't know, a little more realistic tone there um, because they would have they're not all going to get along. Things are going to happen. Um, so I we could even fit something in like what basically what I'm saying is there is so much to plumb here. There is mm -hmm. so much to dig into with just that culture um, that that the middle of the book is going to be a cakewalk, at least for me, because um, mm -hmm. I've done I've done this so much. It's like I said, it's my favorite genre and I've researched. That's all I've been researching for the past three years. So I'm super excited to get into that section of the book. Um, I'm also going to have fun at the beginning because I love the family dynamic of you know everybody against this poor kid except for his cousin. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that the cousin, his his informant is going to be like nine years old. That's just absolutely brilliant. I love I've never seen that before ever. So and that's I also love that that was a mixture of our ideas where, you know, I came up with the informant and you came up with the fact that, you know, he's going to be like nine years old. That's it's fucking beautiful, man. This is yeah. the magic I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm excited. I just thought of an idea for the <clears throat> the reason why they keep the carnival uh, antagonist there, the Ferris wheel guy. Yeah. The reason why he's still still there and tolerated is because <clears throat> he actually owns the ferris wheel he brought yeah, yes the ferris that, that's wheel perfect because the operators owner that that is another whole dynamic in there is owner operators versus just people hired to run rides that the that the owner owns that is perfect so it could literally be like the only and that would boost him up the hierarchy to be right underneath and that's what i was trying to get at earlier i didn't express myself right but in the in a carnival setting the the ride operators that own their their rides are going to be higher than the ones who just run them so yeah yes perfect i like that um and if they lose that that's a major money maker that's a yeah you gotta have it you gotta have a ferris yeah, wheel it, exactly you have to um yeah i'm excited so i'm good a anything else you want to go go over i don't think so i uh so i i won't write anything until tomorrow when we're doing this live do, do you want, well, I mean, it all depends on you. If you want to go live on your own channel and I'll just sit there and watch you write, or I, I know everybody's expecting to watch the entire process. So how do you, how do you want to do this? We'll, we'll just, we'll, we can just do it tomorrow then. Um, okay. I will try to at least have an idea of where I'm started. So you guys aren't just staring at me, twirling my hair while I, uh, right. you know. I got you. Um, if it, I, I also don't want to limit us. So if you need to go ahead and write something, go ahead and do it. If you already got it locked into your head, I'm saying I'm fine with go ahead and do it because there are bound to be times when I want to get something done that I can't stream. Like I'll be in bed um, and something will come to me and I'll have to write something out so I don't lose it. 
Yeah. Um, so there's bound to be that. So if you want to go ahead and start, man, go ahead and start. And that way that we have a jumping off point tomorrow, um, you might have the first whole chapter, first chapter done. And then I can be working on two while you're working on three. Um, and we end up re writing a fucking, you know, 300 page book in like two weeks. This is what's going to end up happening because you only really have to write 25,000 words. I only have to write 25,000 words and dude, I can write 25,000 words in like a fucking weekend. So it's, it, it, yeah, uh, do, do what you need to do today or tonight and we will come back tomorrow and then people are going to be able to read it anyways. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that they are actually going to appreciate more seeing, you know, what you already have done instead of sitting there waiting for you to, you know, like you said, come up with it on the spot. So do we, how are we going to do that? Share screen or how is that going to yeah, work? Yeah. Um, what we do is uh, there's uh, options down here. Where is it? I can't remember. Let's it's see. under present, I think. Uh, yeah, you go over and yeah, share screen. It's literally the app button. You click on share screen and then you click your Word document. It'll show up in the list um, and then you can share it. Um, and it'll okay. only it'll only show. Good Lord. Why does it look like that? Anyways, okay, um, it'll only show the screen that you click on to it only show that window. So if you click out of that window, you're not going to you're not going to show your desktop or whatever sensitive things you might have. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're not going to show off the rest of your computer. It's yeah. specific to that window. Um, make sure before we go that you can share your screen from your end without yeah. us having to pay for it. I, uh, I I should be able to uh, share screen and then I can either. Um... Hell yeah, Tim. Good job, man. Tim sold a first horror story and have another one coming out on the Nightlight podcast. You guys are a huge inspiration. Awesome. I'm glad we're helping, man. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. And then all I got to do is add it. Yeah. See? And then we have the never ending stream yeah, yeah you can, so yeah we can do that and then um let's see if we can both share at the same time let me okay. open up a, a word doc. yeah let me open a thing here um i'll open up knickknack and then share screen window why is it not showing up Chrome tab, window. It's not even showing up for me. Well, that's not good. Hang on. Screen sharing was canceled. Make sure you click share. Yeah, I get that. Share screen. Window. Yeah, mine's not showing up as an option. I can share like my my uh, my Chrome tab. But, all right, let me restart Word. Or maybe make it. Oh, is it because I had it minimized? I don't know. Yeah, it's because I had it min minimized. Um, oh, nope. Go back up. Open. And then click there. Click back over here. Okay, so this would be mine. Um, can you can you now share yours? Yes, add the stream. <laughs> oh, Lord. How do we... It's over mine. I, it seems like it, it would allow it to split it. It doesn't look like it. So no matter, we can only share our screens at stream, uh, our screens at one at a time, because every time I click yours, add to screen, mine goes away. And then when I do, yeah, you can't have both of them on the screen at the same time. Hang on, full screen layout. Let me try it. No, don't want to do that. Uh, stop screen. Oh, nope. Oh, well. So we won't be able to show both of us. Uh, well, we can just hop back and forth. Like, let people read what we what we came up with. Um, have one of us up there at one time and then just keep swapping them out. We can that'll, do that. Yeah, okay, that'll work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That works. We'll figure it out. Um, also, I think what I can do on my end, it would take a lot of research, but... I have OBS, which is a streaming video recording software. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know what that is. Okay. Um, 
what I think I can do is I can do something to where I use OBS on my side to share my screen where I'm just a little, it'll be my screen and then I'll be down here in one of these corners and then you'll be able to share your screen. I, I might be able to do something like that, but at the same time, when we share a screen, the screen takes up the majority of this. So mine would be tiny, but I don't know. Hmm. I, I don't know about schedule, Tim. Um, right now we've been doing every day, but I, I don't know if that'll keep up or not. Um, and there are bound to be times, like I said, where we're, we're writing and not streaming. So, but you guys will get a, will be able to read everything as the days go on. Um, I'm sure we'll go over, uh, uh, like whatever Chad writes tonight or any point in time, I will of course have to read it before we move on. And I'll try to do that on stream. So. All right. Well, I got to get out of this chair. Uh, thanks again, Chad. Uh, and again, this is a fantastic fucking idea. Yeah. This is this is amazing. I love it. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go. Uh, I got some videos to shoot and all that stuff. Uh, how would I be able to read everything? It's going to be it's literally going to be on the stream. Yeah, it's going to be on the stream. So you're going to watch us write. You just can't watch us both write at the same time. Um, but we'll, we'll we might figure something out. Who knows? This is just an experiment, um, and I'm glad to have you guys along. But, uh, yeah, thanks again, Chad. Until yeah, next time, all hail the chair.